The college football season is just around the corner. And for the first time in a decade, we have a new college football game. So today we're gonna use EA Sports College Football 25 to simulate the college football season and see what's going to unfold this season. So we're gonna load up a dynasty. I'm gonna be the head coach of the Kennesaw State Owls. I'm not actually gonna do any recruiting. I've turned everything to automatic. The reason I'm picking Kennesaw State is because I don't think they're really gonna do anything this season. If they make the playoffs, I'll be shocked. And we're just gonna go week by week and we're gonna simulate the games. We're gonna see who, you know, who wins the Heisman, who all this other stuff. We're gonna see how this season unfolds. Obviously the preseason top 25, you have Georgia, Ohio State, you know, you have the rest of the schools down here, Texas, Oregon, Ole Miss, Alabama, Penn State, Notre Dame, Michigan, Missouri, Florida State, Utah, so on and so forth. Carson Beck, Winshawn Judkins, and Ali Gordon are the three favorites for the Heisman. I would be shocked if we didn't see one of them win it, especially in real life. Taking a look at the power conferences, they think Florida State is gonna win the ACC. Oklahoma state is going to win the big 12 they think michigan's going to win the big 10 that'd be interesting and then alabama is going to win the sec so let's let's go let's take a look at week one see if there's any great games in week zero we have the florida state versus georgia tech game and then in week one we have a couple good games lsu usc obviously a lot of teams are playing fcs schools um and then we have georgia versus clemson this is going to be a great game obviously miami florida should be a sneaky good one another good one in notre dame texas a&m so in week zero florida state blanks georgia tech 31 to nothing let's take a look at this game dju played fantastic and then in week one, LSU absolutely annihilated USC. Shout out to Garrett Newsmeyer. Only had six incompletions. And then Georgia just takes down Clemson. Kate Klubnik had a fantastic game. So did Carson Beck. Georgia just outplayed Clemson. And Notre Dame walks into College Station and takes down Texas a and That's a huge fourth quarter for them. Riley Leonard had a great game, ran the ball really well. Wow, Riley Leonard was doing everything against Texas A&M. Weigman played fine, just wasn't good enough to get the win. Taking a look at week two, there is some real standout games. Texas goes to Michigan. That's gonna be incredible. And then on top of that, NC State goes to Tennessee. Wow. And Texas actually whoops the hell out of Michigan. Oh my goodness, they scored more in the second quarter than Michigan did the entire game. Alex Orgy did it absolutely nothing through the air. Yeah, they just couldn't get anything going. Texas, CJ Baxter dominated the blue on the ground. Quinn Ewers didn't even do anything. How the hell did they score? Oh my God, on the ground, they absolutely killed them. One touchdown for CJ Baxter, two for Jaden Blue, one for Isaiah Bond, another one for Quinn Ewers. My goodness, they ran all over Michigan. And then NC State took care of Tennessee handedly. I'm kind of shocked. NC State, a team, usually doesn't do that well in the sim. Grayson McCall really didn't play that well either, but Jordan Waters played really well. And obviously Grayson McCall had a good impact on the ground. Let's see how Tennessee did. They ran the ball okay, but I don't really know how Tennessee lost this game. It's They seem like they played fine offensively. But alas, NC State got the win. Looking ahead to week three, we have a big game as Alabama heads to Wisconsin. That's going to be an incredible game. Big 12 play starts as Arizona heads to Kansas State. Those are going to be some really good games. And Alabama goes into Madison and just sneaks by Wisconsin. Let's take a look at this. Jalen Miller played okay. They ran the ball. I mean, it was a defensive game, right? Wisconsin really didn't get anything going. There was only 40 points total. They really didn't run the ball well. Van Dyke played, you know, okay enough to keep him in the game, but damn, Alabama just sneaks out of that one with a win. And then Arizona actually falls to Kansas State in Manhattan. Let's take a look at this one. Fafita played fine. The running the ball was really inefficient. Kansas State, they ran the ball really well with DJ Giddens. And Avery Johnson played pretty well. I mean, this is a great game. Kansas State, sneaky good team in the Big 12. Let's definitely see them make a run. In week four, we have a trio of high-level games. Tennessee goes to Norman to take on number 21, Oklahoma. Number 10, NC State goes to number 17, Clemson in a rivalry game. This is an important game for ACC play as well. And then number seven, Utah goes to number nine, Oklahoma State. A battle of undefeated teams in Stillwater. These are going to be good games. Tennessee actually falls to Oklahoma on the road. Let's see how Jackson Arnold did. He played pretty well. They had legitimately zero run game. This was, an, I don't know how the hell Oklahoma won this game because Tennessee somehow didn't do anything either. And Nico threw two picks. Yeah, this is just freshman mistakes going into a really tough environment in Norman. NC State, Clemson. Clemson actually takes down NC State, gives them their first loss of the season. Cade Klubnick threw four interceptions and they still won this game. That is incredible. They ran the ball pretty well, Phil Maffa, over 100 yards. How did NC State play? Didn't run the ball well. And Grayson McCall didn't throw an interception. You're telling me Cade Klubnick threw four interceptions and they still won by double digits? That's crazy. What a game that's gonna be if that turns out anything like that. A close game heading into the fourth quarter. Utah absolutely decimates Oklahoma State. Alan Bowman didn't play bad. 
Ollie Gordon played well. They just defensively could not stop the Utes. Micah Bernard was 70 yards. Jalen Glover with 50 of his own. Dorian Singer had almost 20. Cam rising 260 with four touchdowns. Almost half of that to, to Damian Alford. He had this Utah offense. Again, another team. They're scary. Looking at week five, we have a litany of great games. Number 15, Oklahoma State. No rest for the weary. You have to go on the road to take on undefeated number eight, Kansas State. Louisville, number 24, has to go to South Bend to take on number 14, Notre Dame. We have a battle of top five teams, two undefeated SEC champions. Number one, Georgia goes to Tuscaloosa to take on number four, Alabama. Another undefeated game is number 22, Illinois, heads to University Park to take on number five, Penn State. Not to be undone, we have two other games. Number 25, Kentucky, heads to Oxford to take on number 10, Ole Miss. And finally, number 13, Arizona, heads to undefeated number six, Utah, to try to knock off the Utes. That was a lot of top 25 matchups. Let's take a look and see if they win some of these games. That Georgia-Alabama game is going to be incredible. Start off with Oklahoma State, Kansas State, Kansas State defended home field easily taking down Oklahoma State by 17. Avery Johnson played really well. Ran the ball, you know, handed it off to a bunch of different guys. Oklahoma State, Ollie Gordon really didn't get going. Alan Bowman played fine, but when you shut down the best running back in the game, and probably in real life, you're going to have an easy time winning that game. Louisville just fell short to Notre Dame. Got blanked in the first half. Let's take a look at this one. Tyler Show played, you know, okay. Didn't run the ball at all. Well, that's that's the key. If you really can't run the ball, you have a really hard time winning, especially in the sim. Notre Dame didn't run the ball too well, but Riley Leonard, perfect game. 270 with three touchdowns. No turnovers. In a game like this at home, all you have to do is enough. The Georgia-Alabama game came down to the literal wire, but Alabama sneaks by 37 to 35. Milrow played fine. He had one interception. They ran the ball okay. Jalen Miller really had to put the team on his back. And then Georgia couldn't run the ball at all, even though they had four rushing touchdowns and ran for less than 35 yards as a team. That's incredible. Carson Beck probably lost in this game. Two turnovers in Tuscaloosa at Brian Denny. Uh, it's not a recipe for success. Another game that was not really that close. Illinois comes into University Park. Penn State handles them handedly. Luke Altmeyer had two interceptions. Ran the ball for literally less than 40 yards. That's not a recipe for success. Penn State, however, ran all over Illinois. Drew Aller is hurt. So they go to sophomore Bo Prabula, and he still is playing really well. So Drew Aller is hurt. Let's take a look at some other key injuries. Alabama is missing Jihad Campbell. I know it says Arizona. I promise you it says Al it should be Alabama. Arizona is missing some key contributors. Tetero McMillan. I don't know how to pronounce his name. Tetero McMillan and Dalton Johnson look like they're going to be out for a significant portion of the season. Clemson is dealing with a lot of injuries as well. They, they lost right tackle Blake Miller, two receivers in TJ Moore and Antonio Williams, both with broken bones. They should be back soon, but definitely some key injuries we're seeing. Florida State, the number six team in the country, undefeated, dealing with an injured offensive lineman, Richie Leonard IV, out with a forearm fracture. He's out for two weeks. George's Warren Brinson is out with a torrid rotator cuff. He's done for the entire season. Iowa State's Benjamin Brommer has a complete ACL tear. He's out for the entire season. It looks like he might be out for part of next season, too. Obviously, these injuries in this game, we don't want them to happen in real life, but this is, you know, teams are going to get injured. People are going to get hurt. At the end of the day, this is just a simulation, and, you know, what could happen. Brendan Mott, the senior right end, has a dislocated hip. He's going to be out for a month. Mason Taylor and Deshaun Womack are out. Obviously, Deshaun Womack, he should be back soon. But Mason Taylor, a six-week injury for a broken collarbone. That's brutal. Miami, another team doing really well. They're 5-0, and currently undefeated. They have three big injuries. Obviously, Marley Cook has a ruptured disc. All of them, they should be back in the next couple weeks. Francisco Mawigo has a torn labrum. Ruben Bain Jr. has a broken thumb. I mean, teams are just getting banged up. NC State senior star left tackle Anthony Belton is out with a hamstring tear for about a month. Jaden Mickey from Notre Dame, he has a dislocated ankle. He's out for two months. Fabechi Nawawiu, he has a forearm fracture. Oklahoma, four and one, two and oh in the new SEC. They're doing pretty well so far. Oklahoma State, Dalton Cooper, the senior, broke his hand. He's a star left tackle. He's out for seven weeks. Probably a big reason why Oklahoma State's dropped their last two games. Antoine Wells for Ole Miss. He has an abdominal tear. He's only out for two weeks, but still, he lost the game. Maybe that's why. Drew Aller's partial MCL tear. We talked about it earlier. He's out for six more weeks. We'll see if they can stay undefeated in that time. Tennessee's Dylan Sampson. He has a partial MCL tear. He's out for three weeks. They're two and two. That's a huge reason why. Texas A&M, and one. They're having a great start to their season, but Cassius Howell has a partial PCL tear. He's out for five weeks. They have one loss. He's a big reason why they're missing him. Kentucky Ole Miss was another great game. Kentucky thoroughly dominated Ole Miss until literally the last quarter. And even then, they still won by over three scores. Vandergriff had three touchdowns in Oxford. They ran the ball really well with Diamante Trianum. They ran the ball okay. Jackson Dart did not play well. That's huge. If Jackson Dart doesn't play well, this team is really limited. Finally, Arizona went to Utah. Utah came out strong in that first quarter. Pretty much coasted the rest of the way. Noah Fafita played well. Again, couldn't really run the ball, and that's huge in these sims, as you can tell. A little over 100 yards on the ground for Utah, and then Cam Rising, six touchdowns, 350 yards. Oh my goodness. Dorian Singer, a buck 50 with two touchdowns. Damian Alford had 80 yards and two touchdowns, 66 yards, the tight end with two more touchdowns. 
they absolutely threw the ball all over the place against Arizona. Only two high-level games this week. Missouri heads to College Station to take on number 15 Texas A&M, and Clemson heads to undefeated Florida State to see if they can give them their first loss. That should be a good one. Taking a look at the week six games, Georgia just sneaks by Auburn. My goodness. Arizona just snuck by Texas Tech. Texas A&M defended home field really well. Let's see how Brady Cook and Co. did. Brady Cook got, looks like he got hurt. Maybe he was just knocked out for the game, but Sam Horn came in, played okay. They ran the ball you know, not terribly effective considering Texas A&M ran the ball pretty well as well. And then Connor Wiegman, three, 250 with three touchdowns, played a great game. Going on the road in the SEC, you really have to be great to win these games. And Missouri just wasn't. And then Clemson comes into Tallahassee and smacks around Florida State. Oh my God, Kate Klubnik, we've seen him a couple times. He threw two picks, two touchdowns. I don't know how the hell Tennessee's winning these games. They ran the ball okay. How did Florida State do? Didn't run the ball well. DJ played fine. He didn't have a turnover. I, I just don't understand. Clemson's defense is playing super well and just bending, not breaking in order to let this team win these games. Kate Klubnik, I think we've seen two of these games. It's around six interceptions. That's unreal. We have the Red River shootout, the Red River rivalry, number 19, Texas, and number nine, Oklahoma. It's going to be a great game. And then number one, Ohio State goes on the road to number 13, Oregon. That's going to be a brutal game for Ohio State. Finally, number 17, Ole Miss goes to number 12, LSU in the Magnolia Bowl. Another game that should be really contested. We got two teams fighting to stay alive in the SEC race. And then for this one, can Ohio State stay undefeated? Let's find out. Taking a look at the week seven schedule, Mississippi State actually goes into Athens and upsets Georgia. I was not expecting that. Texas loses to Oklahoma. Let's take a look at this one. Oklahoma played really well. Oh, Jackson Arnold got hurt. Casey Thompson played okay. He's a senior. They ran the ball really well, him and Gavin Sawchuk. Let's take a look at Texas. CJ Baxter ran great. Quinn Ewers just didn't play great. Now he wasn't bad. He just wasn't great. And again, in a game against Oklahoma, you got to be great. Kentucky sneaks by Vanderbilt. North Carolina sneaks by Georgia Tech. Missouri sneaks by UMass. Purdue sneaks by Illinois. Ohio State goes into Oregon and takes down the Ducks. Let's take a look at this game. It was 21 to 14 going into the fourth quarter. Ohio State with a massive fourth quarter. Will Howard playing well. They got a lot of quarter de back depth here too. Devin Brown, Julian Sayan, Lincoln Keyholz. They didn't run the ball well, but damn it, it didn't matter. Let's take a look at Oregon. They didn't run the ball well either. Dylan Gabriel threw 230 with two touchdowns. Did have a pick and that must've been the deal breaker because damn, Ohio State still undefeated. NC State sneaks by Syracuse. Penn State sneaks by USC. These are some great games. And Ole Miss goes in to Baton Rouge and takes down LSU. Close game. Just Garrett, no, Garrett Nussmeyer threw three picks. Yeah, that's the difference. Oh my God. They ran the ball well. Josh Williams over 100 yards on the day, but when you throw three interceptions, that's crazy. Ole Miss ran the ball really well over 160 yards on the ground. Jackson Dart, three touchdowns, didn't have a turnover. That's the difference right there. That's QB play. Taking a look at week eight, number 20, Oregon heads to number 23, Purdue. It's going to be an interesting game. The spoiler makers, they're playing really well. Also have number 19, LSU headed to number 25, Arkansas. LSU still looking for its first SEC win. This is a rivalry game. That's a huge game for both teams. And then finally, undefeated number six Miami heads to Louisville to take on the Cardinals. See if they can hold that win streak up. Boston College sneaks by Virginia Tech. Duke upsets number 21 Florida State. A&M barely sneaks by Mississippi State. Oregon, let's take a look at this one. Oregon going up by seven into the fourth quarter. Sneak by Purdue 24 to 18. Just an ugly game. Dylan Gabriel only had 230 passing yards, two touchdowns. Ran the ball okay between Treshawn Holden, Dylan Gabriel, and Jordan James. Purdue, they ran the ball pretty well too. Hudson Card played fine. Just when you play in Oregon, you got to play great, even though you're at home. LSU finally gets its first SEC win, taking down Arkansas by 14. Let's take a look at this. Taylor Green played okay. They didn't really run the ball well. Josh Williams had 56 and a touchdown. Garrett Nussmeyer, four touchdowns, 350 on the day. That is a recipe for success. Upsets Kansas State by one point. Wow. Maryland, they take down USC by four. Tennessee upsets Alabama. Wow. Kentucky just sneaks by Florida in the swamp and Miami comes into Louisville. It was a four point game going to the fourth quarter and they pulled away. Miami still undefeated. Louisville didn't play bad. You, again, you just have to play great when you're playing a team like Miami. Even though Miami didn't run the ball well, Cam Ward played just well enough and this defense is, is vaunted. So Miami, this is definitely not a team that I think a lot of people are looking at this season to be a potential college football playoff team. But according to the game, Miami might be the real deal. Heading into week nine, number 19, Oklahoma goes to Oxford to take on number 10, Ole Miss. And then we have two other great games. The LSU Texas A&M rivalry, number 14, LSU goes to number six, Texas A&M. That's going to be really tough for LSU. And finally, the Battle of Florida, number 21, Florida State 
heads to undefeated number four Miami looking to give them their first loss. Let's take a look. Syracuse just sneaks by Pitt. Virginia upsets undefeated North Carolina. Wow. Michigan State comes in Tan Arbor and just takes down Michigan. Penn State squeaks out a win against Wisconsin. Kentucky just holds on against Auburn. Oklahoma wins an overtime thriller after Ole Miss completed a three-score comeback against Ole Miss. Jackson Arnold 350 with six touchdowns. They didn't run the ball at all. This was an air raid attack. Nick Anderson had a buck 20 with two touchdowns. Jake Roberts, 78 with a touchdown. Jaleel Farouk with a touchdown and almost 50 yards. My goodness, Andrea Anthony had a touchdown. Justin Beebe, the receiving back, had a touchdown. This was a shootout. Let's take a look at Ole Miss. Jackson Dart, 260 with three touchdowns, but they had two on the ground between Ulysses Bentley and Henry Parrish. Trey Harris had a buck 40. Jordan Watkins had 50 yards and a touchdown. Antoine Wells, 35 yards and a touchdown. This was a great game. You want to talk about an offensive explosion? My goodness. Utah just squeaks away a win against Houston. Missouri absolutely fucking annihilates Alabama. Oh my God. LSU in another SEC shootout. Wow. Texas A&M comes back against LSU and wins 48 to 44. Garrett Nussmeyer 450 with four touchdowns. Did have a pick. Running the ball was semi-effective, but Kyron Lacey, almost 170 yards with a touchdown. CJ Daniels had damn near 100 with a touchdown. Mac Markway had 75. Xavier Thomas had 70 yards with two touchdowns. My goodness, let's take a look at AM. Connor Weekman only had 350 yards, but two touchdowns. They ran the ball really well. Ruben Owens had 88 yards on the ground. Weekman had a touchdown as well as Noah Thomas. And then through the air, Noah Thomas, 140 yards, a touchdown. Cyrus Allen had a touchdown and 60 yards. And Moose Muhammad had over 50 himself. Yeah, this was a great game. My goodness, Texas A&M earned that win. And then Florida State comes into Miami tied in the fourth quarter and upset the Hurricanes to give them their first loss of the season. DJU almost 450 yards with five touchdowns. Again, no running game, but Jaquie Douglas had 150 yards through the air. Malik Benson had 140 yards with a touchdown. Destin Hill had two touchdowns at almost 70 yards. Roydell Williams had a touchdown through the air. Lawrence Toa Feely had a touchdown through the air. My goodness. Let's take a look at Miami. Colby George had 160. 60 yards with three over the touchdown but other than that cam ward three touchdowns had two turnovers against florida state that's not gonna do it taking a look at week 10 we have number eight oregon against number 19 michigan it's gonna be a tough game for oregon to come in there also have number four kentucky with only one loss headed to knoxville to take on number 14 tennessee number 18 north carolina has to go to number 11 florida state they have to bounce back. If they lose another game, that's going to be brutal for North Carolina. But the game of the week, number seven, Ohio State, goes to undefeated number one, Penn State, to try to knock off the Nittany Lions in University Park. We are in week nine. We can take a look at the college football playoff polls. There's currently two undefeated teams, number one, Penn State, number six, Utah. Rounding out the college football playoff, we have number two, Notre Dame, number three, Texas A&M. Kentucky, number four, I bet Bordeaux is happy. Number five, Georgia, five and two, interesting. Number seven, Ohio State, six and one. Number eight, Oregon, six and two. Number nine, Miami, seven and one. Number 10, Kansas State, seven and one. Number 11, Florida State, six and two. And number 12, Oklahoma, six and two. Let's take a look at the highest one watch. We haven't looked at it all season. Right now, Will Howard is leading it, interesting. Also have Taylor Green, the quarterback from Arkansas. Cam Ward, the quarterback from Miami. If he if they're having a season like they are right now, he'd absolutely probably be the favorite. Davion Thomas, a receiver from LSU. And KJ Jefferson, the quarterback for UCF, very unique Heisman list. I, th I mean, honestly, if, if Cam Ward was playing this well and Miami was, you know, seven to one at this point in the season, to me, he's probably the Heisman guy, but we'll check back in a couple weeks. All right, looking at week 10, Oregon-Michigan game. Let's take a look at this one. Wow. Going into the fourth quarter, Michigan was only down by three, but then Oregon absolutely blew them out. Scoring 21 in the fourth quarter. Alex Orgy wow, he plays bad in this game. Four picks. Holy. They're running the ball well. Donovan Edwards living up to his cover athlete status, but Oregon is loaded. Jordan James, almost 100 yards with a touchdown. Dylan Gabriel only had 170 yards, but had four different touchdowns. One to Evan Stewart, one to Terrence Ferguson, and two to Treshawn Holden. Oregon, looking like a real tough team to beat. Ole Miss just sneaks by Arkansas. Florida actually upsets Georgia. Kentucky takes down Tennessee, and they keep their top five ranking. Brock Vandergriff, three touchdowns, only 160 yards. Ran the ball pretty well between him and Diamante Treyanum. Trey Yanum. I don't know how to pronounce that guy's last name. And then Tennessee, Nico played okay, but he had a turnover. He ran the ball pretty well between him and Dylan Sampson, who's glad he's back from injury. Just wasn't enough to take down a top five team in Kentucky. South Carolina upsets number 14, Texas A&M. North Carolina goes into Florida State, into Tallahassee to take down Florida State. That's huge for them. They keep their one loss. 
DJU with three turnovers. My goodness, didn't run the ball well. North Carolina, Amarian Hampton had almost 100 yards with two touchdowns. Max Johnson, the quarterback, had 51 yards on the ground. I forgot Max Johnson. Wow, he didn't even play that well. Wow, this was a defensive game. Both quarterbacks played terrible. If DJU had played literally just average, they would have won that game. UCF upsets Arizona. Number one, Penn State just holds on against Ohio State. Will Howard played fine. They ran the ball okay between Quinchon Judkins and Travion Henderson, but Nick Singleton ran all over the place. And Bo Pribula, Drew Aller is still hurt. Bo Pribula is balling right now. Penn State looks like the team to beat. Looking ahead at week 11, Purdue goes to Ohio State. That's going to be a great one. Georgia goes to Ole Miss. That's going to be a tough one as well. A sneaky game. Number seven, Oklahoma goes to number 22, Missouri. It's not going to be easy for Oklahoma going into Columbia. And then number 15, Florida State goes to number two, Notre Dame. And finally, the one of the best rivalries in college football, number 12, Alabama, goes into Death Valley to take on number 13, LSU. That's going to be a great game. Taking a look at the top 25, a lot of the same teams here, but we do have NC State jumping all the way up to eight, Ole Miss jumping up to 10, and Alabama jumping up to 12. We're in for a real ride down the stretch of the season. Cal actually takes down Wake Forest. Boston College just sneaks by Syracuse. Ohio State takes down Purdue. Let's take a look at this one. Will Howard played okay but they ran the ball all over the place. Will Howard had 120 yards on the ground. Quinchon Judkins in just five carries had 70 yards and a touchdown. Trevion Henderson had a touchdown as well. Purdue didn't run the ball bad. Devin Mockaby had 66 yards. Hudson Card played fine, just wasn't enough to take down Ohio State. Ole Miss takes down Georgia. Let's take a look at this one. This was a nice high-powered game. Carson Beck had two turnovers, but did have 400 yards and four touchdowns. Etienne had 40 yards, really didn't run the ball well, but Oscar Delp had 100 yards. Colby Young in just two receptions had 88 yards and a touchdown. Dylan Bell had 76. Dominic Lovett had a touchdown and 70 yards. London Humphreys had 50 yards and a touchdown. But it wasn't enough as Ole Miss. Jackson Dart does have a turnover, but throws for 300 yards and five touchdowns. Has 90 on the ground with a touchdown. Ulysses Bentley has 90 on the ground. Jordan Watkins has 90, almost 100 yards through the air with three touchdowns. Antoine Wells in just two catches has 95 yards and a touchdown. Trey Harrison just five catches has 90 yards and a touchdown. Just an absolute offensive explosion from Ole Miss. Iowa State just sneaks by Kansas. Missouri smacks around Oklahoma. My goodness. Brady Cook, 400 yards, five touchdowns. Did have a pick, but damn, didn't even need a running game. Luther Burden, 229 yards in three touchdowns. Holy shit. Mookie Cooper had 90 yards to the year with a touchdown, and Theo Weese had 80 yards. Oh my God. Luther Burden, that was a that's, that might be the best receiving game we've seen all season. For Oklahoma, Jaleel Farouk had 90 yards with a touchdown. Didn't really run the ball very well. Jackson Arnold, 278 with a touchdown. Didn't play bad, just didn't play good enough to beat Missouri. NC State just sneaks by Duke, and Notre Dame just sneaks by Florida State in overtime. 38 to 35, DJU, just the turnovers are killing Florida State. Ran the ball okay. Blake Benson had 100 yards. Kyle Morlock had 50 yards and a touchdown. Jakey Douglas had four receptions. Two of those were touchdowns. Riley Leonard, he didn't play great either. This game could have gone either way. But this rushing attack, Jeremiah Love, 90 yards, almost 100 yards on the ground. Riley Leonard had 70 yards and a touchdown. Jadarian Price had two touchdowns on the ground. Mitchell Evans, two of his three receptions were touchdowns. That's incredible. That was a great game. But finally, Alabama goes on the road and takes down LSU. Wow, Jalen Milrow, 313 with three touchdowns, played a great game, ran the ball well between Justin Haynes and himself. Jeremy Bernard, almost 100 yards and a touchdown. CJ Dippery, the tight end, had a touchdown in 50 yards. Kendrick Law had a touchdown in 50 yards. Taking a look at the LSU side, Garrett Newsmeyer has just not played consistently well. One touchdown, 200 yards, but also had a pick. Didn't really run the ball well. Just tough to beat a team like Alabama when you're not playing that well. Week 12, Wake Forest goes to number 13 North Carolina that's going to be a great game North Carolina still with one loss looking good they're looking at an outside spot in the playoff even if they don't win the ACC number one Penn State has to put their undefeated record on the line against number 24 Purdue we know how good the spoiler makers are this could be a tough one taking a look at the top 25 we see a lot of the same teams however we do see Texas a and jump into the top 12 as well as Boston College Definitely not a team I expected to see here. Also, Miami, Kansas State, Kentucky, and then some usuals in Oregon, Ohio State, Utah, Notre Dame, and Penn State. Taking a look at the top 25, Toledo actually sneaks by Central Michigan. Wisconsin upsets number 16, Oregon. Texas sneaks by Arkansas. North Carolina takes down Wake Forest. Let's take a look at this game. Max Johnson played a great game. Three touchdowns, 350 through the air. Martin Hampton had 50 yards on the ground. Kobe Pesaro had 100 yards through the air with a touchdown. And Nate McCollum on just three catches, 100 yards, two touchdowns. Great game from the North Carolina receivers. Wake Forest wise, Hank Bachmeyer played okay. The two turnovers are what cost them. Didn't run the ball at all. Donovan Green, 105 yards to the air with a touchdown. And Taylor Moran had almost 100 as well, but it wasn't enough to take down the Tar Heels. Penn State continues their undefeated streak, taking down Purdue. Drew Aller is finally back. Two touchdowns. Did have a pick, but played well enough. On the ground, Nick Singleton had 70 yards. 
Catron Allen had 35 of his own. Take a look at Purdue. Didn't get anything going running. Hudson Card played fine. But again, when you're playing Penn State, you need to play more than fine. You need to play better than fine. Taking a look at the top 25. Again, a lot of teams are the same. However, we do have some new entries. North Carolina jumps into the top 10 with their win against Wake Forest. Alabama jumps into the top 12. They only beat an FCS school, but I think it's more about the teams that lost than the teams that won. Oklahoma on a bye jumps up to number 12, which leads us to the week 13 games. We have some great games. Two top 10 teams get together in Chestnut Hill as number nine North Carolina takes on number eight Boston College. That's gonna be an incredible game. Number 24, Indiana heads to Columbus to take on number three, Ohio State. Number four, Kentucky has to go to Austin to take on number 17, Texas. Also, six and four, number 17, Texas being a top 20 team in the nation is disgustingly incredible. SEC bias. But the game of the week is either going to be the North Carolina game, and if it's not, it is this one. Number 11, Alabama goes to Norman to take on number 12, Oklahoma. The winner of this game puts themselves in a great spot to have a shot at the SEC championship game. Loser puts themselves behind the eight ball. In week 13, Penn State just sneaks by Minnesota. Auburn upsets number 16, Texas A&M. That's a huge win for the Auburn Tigers. Boston College defends home field and absolutely annihilates North Carolina. My goodness, Thomas Castellanos, 337 with four touchdowns. Ty Robichow has 70 yards on the ground with a touchdown. Duran Bradley has 200 yards of the year with two touchdowns on just eight receptions. Dino Tomlin has 100 yards of the year with just two receptions and two touchdowns as well. My goodness, this offense is explosive. Taking a look at North Carolina, Max Johnson did not play well. 160 yards with just one touchdown, had a turnover. Didn't run the ball well. Just couldn't get anything going. Wow, is Boston College a sleeper college football playoff champion? Miami just sneaks by Wake Forest. They are 10-1. Miami and Boston College, two teams I did not expect to see in an at-large conversation for a college football playoff bid. Ohio State just sneaks by Indiana after Indiana has a furious comeback in the fourth quarter. Curtis Rookie played Pretty well, 300 yards, three touchdowns. Uh, Justice Ellison had 70 yards on the ground with a touchdown as well. Donovan McCulley, 150 yards, three touchdowns. Great games, but it just wasn't enough. As Will Howard has 290 with two touchdowns, has 100 yards on the ground with a touchdown. Travion Henderson has 100 yards. Quinshawn Judkins had a touchdown. Jeremiah Smith had 80 yards, two touchdowns through the air. Brandon Innes had 80 yards, and Emeka Ibuka had 75 yards. Yeah, I mean, Ohio State just played just that much better. LSU sneaks by Vanderbilt. Kansas State sneaks by Cincinnati. Nevada, a top 15 team, sneaks by Air Force. This is a team that is going to probably win the at-large. This is a team that could sneak into the college football playoff conversation. Old Dominion, top 20 team, just beat out Marshall. Let's take a look at this Texas game. Texas absolutely annihilates Kentucky. Oh my goodness, Vandergriff played terrible on the road. Didn't run the ball well. Let's take a look at the Texas stats. Quinn Ewers, 340 with five touchdowns. I mean, that's, he's on the cover for a reason, folks. 100 yards on the ground for CJ Baxter with a touchdown as well. Matthew Golden, just six receptions, but had 150 yards, two touchdowns. Silas Bolden had 70 yards with a touchdown. Amari Neblack had 40 yards on the ground with a touchdown. Isaiah Bond had a touchdown with 40 yards. I mean, this Texas offense, when they get going, they're great. Florida upsets Ole Miss in the swamp. And Oklahoma takes down Alabama. They jump all the way up to number seven in the country. Let's take a look at this one. And a monstrous second quarter. Milrow did not even have a touchdown through the air. Ran the ball okay, but okay is not enough when you're playing in the SEC on the road. Let's take a look at Oklahoma Jackson. Arnold 300 yards on the dot with three touchdowns. 58 yards on the ground for Gavin Sawchuk with a touchdown. Arnold also had a touchdown on the ground. Receiving yards. Andrell Anthony, 170 through the air with two touchdowns. And Nick Anderson had 60 as well with a touchdown. Oklahoma just jumped into the top 10. Again, when they're humming, they're going to be a great team. Finally, in the final week of the regular season, number eight Utah goes to number 20 UCF. We have the game. Number nine Texas goes to number 16 Texas A&M. Number six NC State goes to number 17 North Carolina. And finally, number seven Oklahoma goes to number 24 LSU. These are some huge games for these teams. Let's take a look at the conference standings. Miami right now, six and one. They win and they're in. You currently have Boston College and NC State. Three of the top six teams in the country are all in the ACC battling for the ACC championship game. You also have North Carolina with an outside shot at an ACC championship. Utah at eight and one. They have locked their spot in the conference championship up. Kansas State, if they win, they're in. And UCF, they need Kansas State to lose and they need to win their game against Utah. In the Big Ten, Penn State currently undefeated, locked themselves into the conference championship game. Ohio State, if they win, they are in. And if they do not, there's a chance that number 11 Oregon or even Maryland or Indiana or Michigan or even Purdue can sneak into that conference championship game to take on Penn State. It's a long shot for a lot of these teams, but there's a chance. 
Let's take a look at the MAC. Toledo 10 and 1. They are clinched into the conference playoff. Right now, it's Miami of Ohio they'd be playing, but there's an outside shot that if they lose and Bowling Green wins, that Bowling Green would play Toledo. Number 14, Nevada has clinched their spot in the Mountain West Conference Championship game. Right now, they would be playing Hawaii. If Hawaii were to lose, there's an outside shot that someone like UNLV or New Mexico can sneak in, but right now, Hawaii controls their own destiny. And in the SEC, you have so many great teams. I mean, LSU is 6 and 5. 6 and 5 with 2 and 5 in the conference. They're a top 25 team. They're a bottom 5 SEC team, and yet they're still ranked in the top 25. That's unreal. Ridiculous SEC bias. Regardless, Kentucky 6-2. and two. I believe they have all but locked their spot in the SEC Championship game up because they play Louisville this week during rivalry week. Oklahoma and Texas A&M. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Oklahoma and Texas A&M, if they win, they control their own destiny. South Carolina and I believe Missouri, Alabama, Mississippi State, Ole Miss, and Texas still have a chance to make the SEC Championship game. And then the Sun Belt still does division. So in the Sun Belt East, James Madison, if Old Dominion wins, they are in. If not, it's going to be either James Madison or an App State. And they're going to be taking on either Southern Miss, who's literally under 500 in the regular season, or Louisiana, maybe even in Arkansas State or Texas State. We got a lot of good races coming all the way down to the end. Taking a look at the top 25, the top three haven't changed. There's only one undefeated team left in college football, and it is the Penn State Nittany Lions. But we have seen a lot of teams change places. Utah jumps into the top 10. Texas jumps into the top 10 with their win over number 13, Kentucky. Florida State beats the hell out of an FCS school. They move up to 10. Oregon on a bye moves up to 11. And Kansas State, after sneaking by Cincinnati, they move up to the top 12. Heading into the final regular season week, let's take a look at this. Kennesaw State went 5-7. and seven. I know we really weren't focusing on that much because I told you they weren't going to do much, and they didn't. Played okay, especially for the newest team to FBS, winning five games. That's impressive. We had a player of the week. Oh my God, let's take a look at this. Donovan Westmoreland, six tackles and a sack and a win against Louisiana Tech. Shout out to Donovan Westmoreland. Utah takes down UCF. Let's take a look at this game. Utah had a safety. They had five points in the first quarter. In a game, they were up 25 to 23 going into the fourth. They just pulled away to take down the Knights. It looks like KJ Jefferson must've gotten hurt and Ja'Cory Brown came in. He played okay, playing better than KJ Jefferson. Ran the ball pretty effectively as a team. Three touchdowns on the ground, over hundred yards. Just wasn't enough to take down Utah. Utah came rising. He didn't play well either 330 yards with a touchdown ran the ball you know semi-effectively had about 75 yards as a team Damian Alford had 100 yards to the air Dorian Singer had 75 with a touchdown and Money Parks 85 yards on just four catches these top four between Kuthe Dorian Singer Money Parks and Damian Alford they carried this Utah offense all season Ohio State sneaks by Michigan Penn State sneaks by Maryland Texas absolutely annihilates Texas a and my goodness Quinn Ewers three touchdowns less than 200 yards passing wow they ran all over CJ Baxter 80 yards with a touchdown Isaiah they abound on one play, 53 yards. Jaden Blue, almost six yards to carry with two touchdowns through the air. Matthew Golden on just three receptions had 100 yards with a touchdown. Isaiah Bond had 70 yards with two touchdowns. I mean, just very efficient by the Longhorn. Defensively, the Longhorns are everywhere. Pick for Derek Williams, two picks for Malik Muhammad. They were everywhere. USC upsets Notre Dame. Wow. It may sneak back into the top 25. I wonder if that's going to impact Notre Dame's seeding for the playoffs. Alabama sneaks by Auburn in the Iron Bowl. Iowa State upsets Kansas State by 11. Old Dominion sneaks by Arkansas State. Louisville upsets Kentucky. Kentucky has been in a free fall as of late. NC State just holds on to take down North Carolina. Grayson McCall did not play well, but Jordan Waters ran all over the Tar Heel defense. McCall had 44 yards on the ground with two touchdowns as well. Max Johnson didn't play well enough to take down NC State, even though, yeah, they did not run the ball well at all. Florida State just sneaks by Florida. Ole Miss just beat Mississippi State. LSU absolutely obliterates Oklahoma. Oh my God. God, Garrett Neusmeyer is such an inconsistent player. 400 yards and four touchdowns this week. He had a great game. Ran the ball well with Josh Williams, 50 yards and a touchdown. CJ Daniels, 200 yards and three touchdowns. Kyron Lacey, a buck, 50 with a touchdown. Oh my God, they were destroying the OU defense. Jackson Arnold played fine, 300 yards, three touchdowns. Deion Burks had 110 yards through the air with two touchdowns. And Andrew Anthony had 100 yards through the air with a touchdown. It just wasn't enough. LSU exploded offensively. Obviously this week is week 15. It is the Army-Navy Bowl. We do have the conference championships to look forward to in a couple weeks. So let's take a look at those. Kansas State wins this. They are a college football playoff team. If they lose, they're not. Utah, if they lose this game, you're probably not a college football playoff team at large. If they win this game, they might be able to sneak in as an at-large college football playoff team. And the reason they won't make it as the fifth highest conference champion is because Nevada's here. So if Nevada loses, then Old Dominion just needs to win. In North Texas, you you need both Old Dominion and Nevada to lose. Another great games, Oklahoma, Kentucky. The winner of this team makes the college football playoff. The loser is not going to make it. NC State, Miami, you probably can still lose this game and make the college football playoff, but you're playing for a top four seed. NC State, same thing. You might make it if you lose, but you probably want to win this. Obviously, of course you want to win this. And then probably the game of the year, number one Penn State and number two Ohio State in the Big Ten Championship. 
This is going to be an incredible game. Both of these teams are going to make it no matter what the outcome is, but you're playing for the number one overall seed and the loser of this game is going to be no higher than the fifth overall seed in this entire playoff. Let's take a look at the Heisman finalists right now. Will Howard is in the lead for the Heisman. Taylor Green, the number two. Cam Ward, the quarterback for Miami at three. KJ Jefferson at four. And Ty Thompson, if Miami's number three, there's no way it wouldn't go to Cam Ward. It's going to go to Will Howard because it usually does. And they're Ohio State. But if Miami's number three and they brought the U back, there's no way Cam Ward doesn't win this award. Take a look at the other award finalists. Obviously, Ohio State's Will Howard for the Heisman. Robert Brand, this would be James Franklin for the head coach of the year. Best quarterback would go to Will Howard. Best defensive player to Harold Perkins of LSU. Byron Threats, the best DB for UCF. Donovan Edwards, the cover athlete. Cover athlete for a reason. He had a great season. He's in, probably going to win the best running back. Best receiver, Jacoby George. A big reason Miami is the top three team they are. Lombardi Award to Shamar Turner. Texas A&M season has been up and down, but he was great all year. Johnny Unitas Golden Arm Award. They're going to give this to Ham Ward. It's crazy because Will Howard's going to win the Heisman, but Will Howard's hurt. Will Howard is hurt. So I wonder if that's going to go against him and he's going to give Cam Ward maybe a little boost. Best defensive end, Jack Sawyer. Jack Sawyer is a stud, an absolute monster. Best interior offensive lineman, Donovan Jackson. Another guy, absolute monster. Best tight end, Roberto Miranda. This is not a guy I expected to see. I expected to see someone more like Oscar Delp up here, but Randy Pittman and Roberto Miranda, great pieces for their teams. And I mean, the Big 12 was very up and down. You saw Arizona get all the way up to like number 12 and then they're not even ranked anymore. UCF wasn't ranked until recently, but the Big 12 got a lot of offensive weapons. Royals award, gonna go to either of the Penn State coordinators. Yeah, Penn State had a fantastic season. Currently the only undefeated team in the nation. Best linebacker goes to Harold Perkins. Yeah, I mean, we figured that was gonna happen. Best center right now, it looks like it's gonna go to Parker Brailsford. Parker Brailsford is an absolute stud. Absolute stud. Luke Rose award goes to Andre. Borigales, the kicker for Miami. Having a great kicker in football is such an underrated thing, but if you don't have one, you really notice it. Best punter goes to Jack Bouimeister. Utah really don't be punting like that because they are scoring a lot of balls, but shout out to Jack. And the best returner, Jordan Watkins out of Ole Miss. Ole Miss, a sneaky team. If, if a couple teams lose, they could sneak into the at-large conversation for a college football playoff bid. Before the conference championship week, let's take a look at some of the bowl games. They think Old Dominion is going to take on Ohio State in the first round of the playoff. They think NC State's going to take on Notre Dame. Ole Miss against Florida State. Oregon versus Texas. The Boca Raton Bowl between number 21 North Carolina and number 22 North Texas. That would be a really fun game. Shout out to Kansas taking on Stanford in the Gasparilla Bowl. Indiana taking on number 17 Kansas State in the Independence Bowl. Memphis taking on number 20 Louisville in the Military Bowl. And then they think the top four seeds are going to be number 10 Nevada, number one Penn State, number nine Utah, and number three Miami. They think the SEC champion is going to be lower ranked than Nevada. That's crazy. For other bowl games, we got number 25 Baylor, number 12 Boston College. The Pop-Tarts Bowl, always a fun one. Baylor against Boston College would be a really fun clashing of styles. The Alamo Bowl between Nebraska and number 24 UCF would be fun. The Music City Bowl between number 18 Kentucky. I'm 95% sure Kentucky's played in this bowl game like the last three years in real life, which is funny as hell that they played it again against number 23 USC. Purdue against number 19 South Carolina in the ReliQuest Bowl. I'm also fairly certain South Carolina played in that bowl game last year. Michigan against number 14 Alabama in the Cheez-It Citrus Bowl. Nick Saban would roll in his grave if he saw this. And number 13 Oklahoma against Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech is five and seven. You know who also five and seven? The Kennesaw State Owls. Why didn't we get a bowl game? Huh? Why did it go to Georgia Tech? That's crazy. Power five bias, power four bias, I guess. Okay, so let's take a look at the scores of the conference championship games. And Will Howard is your highest winner. Only 3,200 yards, but he had 32 touchdowns and only threw two picks all season. That is an incredible touchdown interception ratio. I mean, he was throwing on average like two or three touchdowns a game and threw a pick like every seven games or something like that. That's crazy. Utah sneaks by Kansas State in overtime to win the Big 12 championship game. Avery Johnson played good, just was not good enough. DJ Giddens ran the ball. They ran the ball pretty well. They had 130 yards on the ground. Jace Brown, 111 yards with a touchdown. Take a look at Utah. Cam Rising, 250. Did have a turnover, but had two touchdowns. Ran the ball really well. Dorian Singer had 70 yards and a touchdown on the ground and just two carries. Mikey Bernard had 40 yards. Cam Rising had 30. Just an all-around effort. Damian Alford had 70 yards with a touchdown. Money Parks had 40 yards with a touchdown. Just did enough to take down Kansas State. Oh, Dominion takes down Louisiana. FAU upsets North Texas, and that's going to end... North Texas' hopes of an at-large bid for the college football playoff. Nevada takes down New Mexico. Kentucky upsets Oklahoma with a fourth-quarter comeback, outscoring the Sooners 14-3. Brock Vandergriff 
330 with four touchdowns. Did have a pick, but it didn't matter. Deamonte Trajanum, 125 yards on the ground. My goodness. Jamori Macklin, a buck 70 with three touchdowns. Anthony Brown Stevens had 40 yards with a touchdown. Holy cow, Kentucky played well. Jackson Arnold had two touchdowns, 270. Didn't have a turnover. They couldn't run the ball well. Just didn't do enough. Deion Burks had 75 yards. Andrew Anthony had 75 yards. And Jaleel Farouk had 60 yards with a touchdown. So Kentucky wins the SEC. Shout out to Bordeaux. Oh my God. NC State takes down Miami. They moved to number two in the country. They were actually down by four going into the fourth quarter and they ripped off 21 unanswered to steal this game. Wow. Cam Ward, 340, but only had one touchdown. Damian Martinez ran the ball with 90 yards and two touchdowns, but Xavier Restrepo hit 120 yards with a touchdown. Uh, Elijah Royo had 90 yards. Josiah Trader had 70, but it, it just wasn't enough. As Grayson McCall goes 302 with five touchdowns. My goodness. And they ran the ball for 130 yards. Jordan Waters had 110 of those. Takar Collins on just four receptions had 134 yards with three touchdowns. And Kevin Concepcion, 40 yards with a touchdown. Noah Rogers, 40 yards with a touchdown. Yeah. NC State. I mean, Miami's going to make it, but I did not expect that. And Penn State goes into the college football playoff undefeated. Oh my goodness. They were trailing at halftime. They had a dominant second half. With Will Howard Hurt, the Ohio State Buckeyes turned to Devin Brown. Devin Brown played okay. You know, 260 with a touch, two touchdowns. He did have a pick. He ran the ball okay. Trayvon Henderson had 60 yards with a touchdown. Emeka Ibuka had a touchdown on the ground as well. G. Scott, the tight end, 114 yards. Emeka Ibuka had 65 yards with a touchdown. And Jeremiah Smith had 50 yards with a touchdown. Wasn't enough as Drew Aller throws for 360, four touchdowns. Didn't have a pick, but didn't matter. Nick Singleton goes for 60 yards and a touchdown. Drew Aller had 40 yards with a touchdown. Harrison Wallace has 100 yards with two touchdowns. Liam Clifford has 75 with a touchdown. Julian Fleming had 60 yards with a touchdown. Penn State. The only undefeated team in the country takes down Ohio State. Let's take a look at the bowl games really quick. So number one seed, the Penn State and the Lions, obviously. Number two, the NC State Wolfpack at 11 and two. Number three, the Utah Utes at number five, or excuse me, at number three, they're 12 and one. At number four, we don't see an SEC team. We see the Nevada Wolfpack. So the Nevada Wolfpack clinched the, were the fourth highest ranked conference champion. So they actually get a top four seed. At number five, you have Ohio State, but because they didn't win the Big Ten, you're automatically dropped to number five. They're going to be taking on number 12, Kentucky. Kentucky won the SEC, so they are the fifth highest rated conference championship, even though we do see Texas up there and Ole Miss. Because Kentucky won the SEC, they're in there. At number six, Florida State, the number four team in the country, but because they did not win the ACC, they fall to six. Ole Miss at 11, they're going to be taking them on, eight to four as well. In the top right, the seven seed, number six, Miami, 11 and two. The 10 seed, number nine, Notre Dame, 10 and two. And in the top left, number seven, Texas in the eight spot. In the ninth spot, number eight, Oregon. I mean, let's just do some predictions. I like Oregon to upset Texas. Texas is really inconsistent, and Oregon always does really well on these. I like Miami to take down Notre Dame. I don't think Notre Dame is for real. Miami has consistently shown that they're really good. Either of these bottom two games going either way, but I'm going to just side with Ohio State because, they're, you know, they're Ohio State. And I'm going to side with Florida State because, well, they're Florida State. So then that gives us a Penn State-Oregon matchup. I think Penn State takes down Oregon, even though that would be a really fun Rose Bowl. Nevada would take on Ohio State. And I'm going to take Nevada to upset Ohio State. NC State would take on Miami. You know, Miami seems, they seem pretty unstoppable. I'm going to take Miami to take down NC State and upset them. Utah would take on Florida State. I would take Utah to take down them. Cam Rising has been nothing short of spectacular. So that would mean my predictions for the final four based on this bracket would be Penn State, Nevada, Miami, and Utah. Penn State versus Nevada, undefeated Penn State. Drew Aller looks like a man on a mission. I'm going to take Penn State to take down Nevada, clinch a spot in the College Football National Championship, and then it would be Utah versus Miami. Ugh, Cam Rising has played great. Cam Ward has played great. I've seen Cam Rising do this enough. I'm going to take Utah and Cam Rising to take down Cam Ward and the Miami Hurricanes. So that means I would have my championship be Penn State versus Utah. Listen, Penn State seems like a team of destiny. They really do. Based on this bracket, I would pick the Penn State Nittany Lions to win the national championship. Let's take a look at the award winners. Obviously, the Heisman went to Will Howard. Head coach went to Robert Brandt. Excuse me, that is actually James Franklin of Penn State. Quarterback, best quarterback went, went to Will Howard. Best defensive player, Harold Perkins. Best DB goes to Byron Threats. Best running back actually goes to Nick Singleton. He sneaks up on Donovan Edwards. Jacoby George wins best receiver. The Lombardi actually goes to Davin Van out of NC State. He's been a huge reason that they have had a lot of success this season. The United's Golden Arm Ward goes to Cam Ward. Of course, it was never going to go to Will Howard. Best DN goes to Devin Van again. He overtakes Jack Sawyer. I did not expect that. Best interior lineman goes to Donovan Jackson, of course. Best tight end, Roberto Miranda. Adam White, the co offensive coordinator for Penn State. This is actually Adam Kotelnecki. Co 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 I don't know how to pronounce his last name, but he was the Kansas offensive coordinator. 
uh, last year. Hill Perkins wins best linebacker. Best center goes to Parker Brailsford. Andreas Baralgas wins the Lou Groza Award. Best punter goes to Jack Bouwemeister. Shout out to Jack Bouwemeister. Best returner goes to Jordan Watkins. So we did see some changes, nothing crazy, but let's take a look at the bowl schedule. Number 17, Old Dominion takes on Western Kentucky in the Bahamas Bowl. I'm actually pretty sure Western Kentucky played in that game last year too, which is really funny. I know there is um, conference affiliation for some of these bowls, but it is still funny to see certain teams play in the same bowls. Kentucky, Ohio State, we talked about. Oregon, Texas, Ole Miss, Florida State, Notre Dame, Miami. The Boca Raton Bowl, this is another game between two top 25 teams, North Carolina and North Texas. This is gonna be a pretty exciting bowl game. Indiana and number 16, Kansas State in the Independence Bowl. Kansas and Stanford in the Gasparilla Bowl. Shout out to Kansas Jayhawks. Memphis and Louisville at the in the military bowl. And then obviously Nevada, Penn State, Utah, and C State as the top four seeds. Baylor, Boston College in the Pop Tarts Bowl. This came to fruition. Alabama, UCF. This came to fruition. Oklahoma UCF, so we don't get Kentucky, we get Oklahoma. That's going to be a great game. And then finally, Miss Citrus Bowl, Michigan State, number 14, Alabama. That should be a hydrogen bomb versus a crying baby. And number 20, South Carolina takes on Wake Forest. Let's take a look at the college football playoff bracket. Let's take a look at these first round games. So Oregon upsets Texas. I was correct on that one. Notre Dame takes down Miami. I did not see that coming. Ole Miss takes down Florida State. That was one I was really iffy on. And then Ohio State takes down Kentucky. So I got two of the four right. If I was to look at it like this, obviously I still think Penn State wins. I still think Nevada wins. I still think Utah wins. <sighs> I don't really believe in Notre Dame. I could see them beating NC State. I want to give NC State the benefit of the doubt. I think they're going to take down Notre Dame. I still think Utah takes down NC State. I still think Penn State takes down Nevada. I still think Penn State wins the whole thing. But I, we're going to have a change in that upper right one. Other games, obviously, Old Dominion just sneaks by Western Kentucky. North Carolina actually falls to North Texas in the Boca Raton Bowl. It was 21 to 18 going into the fourth quarter. North Texas pulls away. Max Johnson, 250 with three touchdowns, did have a pick. 80 yards on the ground. Amari and Hampton had 50 yards on the ground, but it was not enough. Even though Kobe Pacer had a great game, 100 yards through the air. North Texas, Chandler Morris, former TCU quarterback, 266 with four touchdowns. Had a great game. Zach Evans, 50 yards on the ground with a touchdown on just three carries. Blair Conright, 70 yards. Xavier Kautai, 50 yards with two touchdowns. Damon Ward, 46 yards with a touchdown. And Landon Sides, 30 yards with a touchdown. So North Texas completing a great season. Indiana up upsets Kansas State and Louisville sneaks by Memphis. Let's take a look at some of these bowl game scores. Ohio State wins in overtime. Oh my goodness. Brock Vandergriff played fine. Didn't, couldn't run the ball at all. Dane Key had 150 yards with a touchdown. My goodness. Jim, Jamori Macklin had the other touchdown. Devin Brown led Ohio State three touchdowns, 330. Did have a pick, but Quinshawn Judkins had 60 yards with a touchdown. And then Emeka Ibuka stepped up when they needed him most. 140 yards with two touchdowns. Jeremiah Smith had 90 with a touchdown. So they advanced to take on Nevada. I bet Ohio State's favorite in that game too. Oregon, Texas. Oregon takes down Texas handedly. Dylan Gabriel had a great game. Jordan James ran for 60 yards and a touchdown. Evan Stewart, 110 yards with a touchdown. Quinn Ewers played fine, just fine's not enough in the playoffs. CJ Baxter ran the ball okay. Mari Nieblack had 56 yards and a touchdown. Matthew Golden, 57 yards. Isaiah Bond had 80 yards. The extra had 16, Silas Bolden had 16, just wasn't enough. Ole Miss, Florida State, this was a great game. Ole Miss just squeaks by Florida State. DJ, you actually didn't turn the ball over. I was, that's what I was looking for. 340 with two touchdowns, couldn't run the ball. That was the killer. Malik Benson, 150 yards and a touchdown. And Lawrence Toafili had a touchdown, but it was not enough as Jackson Dart and Ole Miss, 250 with a touchdown. Ulysses Bentley, 140 with a touchdown. My goodness. Henry Parrish had a touchdown as well as Logan Diggs. And Antoine Wells, 56 yards with a touchdown. Had a great game. Trey Harris had 80 as well. Notre Dame actually only up by one going into the fourth quarter. They get 17 unanswered to pull away against Miami. Cam Ward did not play well at all. My goodness, I thought I believed in Cam Ward. I was a fool. Two turnovers, no touchdowns. Damian Martinez has 62 yards on the ground. Atrocious game by the Miami the offense. For Notre Dame, Riley Leonard, 225 with a touchdown. Uh, Jeremiah Love had 40 yards on the ground with a touchdown. Same with Jadarian Price. They had about 100 as a team. Jaden Thomas had the touchdown for Notre Dame. Let's take a look at the defense. Jalen Sneed had a, a pick as well as Christian Gray. We got some great quarterfinal games. Let's get right to it. Oregon upsets Penn State. Oh my goodness. Oh my God, no. Ohio State upsets Nevada. No! NC State takes down Notre Dame and Ole Miss upsets Utah. Wow. So that was definitely not what I expected. Okay. We'll take a look at these in a minute. Let's take, let's do some predictions. If I'm basing it off this, Ohio State looks like the real deal. I know they're dealing with some quarterback injuries, but Devin Brown's played well. I think Ohio State takes on Oregon. You know what? Damn it. I'm going to believe in Grayson McCall. I think NC State takes down Ole Miss. We get an NC State Ohio State National Championship game. We're going to go with something different. We're going to go with the NC State Wolfpack to take down Ohio State and win the college football playoff national championship. We're going to take a look at some of these bowl games. Baylor took on Boston College. Boston College takes down the Bears by 10. Daquan Finn played well for Baylor. He did pretty much everything himself. Ashton Hawkins had 150 yards for the year with two touchdowns. It just wasn't enough as Boston College 
Thomas Castellanos, 250 with four touchdowns. My goodness. And Kai Robichow had 100 yards on the ground as well. Receiving-wise, Jaran Bradley on just three receptions, 90 yards with a touchdown. And Lewis Bond, 75 yards with two touchdowns. And Jaden McGowan, 55 with a touchdown. So Boston College, if you're a Boston College fan and this is your season, you would be, I think you'd be ecstatic. USC absolutely smokes. Oklahoma, Lincoln, Riley haters are distraught right now because this would be bad. Jackson Arnold, two touchdowns, two interceptions, did not play that well. Couldn't really run the ball. Deion Burks played well, 130 yards of the year with a touchdown. The USC Miller Moss, five touchdowns only. He did have a pick, but damn. Kyle Ford, 92 yards with two touchdowns. Lake McCree with a touchdown and 60 yards. Zachariah Branch, 50 yards with a touchdown. And Jaden Richardson, 24 yards with a touchdown. Let's take a look at the defense. Easton Mascarenas Arnold, eight tackles, a half sack, a pick. And Mason Cobb, another middle linebacker, five tackles with a pick. Wow, this dude was everywhere. Michigan State upsets number 14 Alabama. Holy, I did not expect that. And number 20 South Carolina sneaks by Wake Forest. Let's take a look at these playoff games. Start off with the Fiesta Bowl. Ohio State just sneaks by Nevada. Ron Kramer, four touchdowns, did have two picks. That's probably the sealer right there. Sean Dollars, 130 yards. If you're a Nevada fan, even if you lose, this would be the, probably the best season in program history. Marshawn Brown had two touchdowns. Andrew Savianea had a touchdown. And Cortez Bram had a touchdown. Taking a look at Ohio State, Devin Brown did have a pick, but three touchdowns, 275. Really didn't run the ball. This was a shootout in terms of just throwing the ball through the air. Jeremiah Smith, 106 yards with two touchdowns. G. Scott had a touchdown as well. Let's take a look at the defensive side. Ray Matthews, another corner in that secondary. Six tackles and a pick for him. And Ohio State is two wins away from a national championship. The Rose Bowl, Oregon, Penn State. I cannot believe Penn State lost this game. Lost in the fourth quarter. Dylan Gabriel once only had 160 passing yards with two touchdowns. Jordan James had 75 with a touchdown on the ground. Trace on holding 54 yards with a touchdown evan stewart 45 patrick herbert shout out to justin 40 yards jurion dickey had 11 and taz johnson had a touchdown this was just a ugly game drew aller two touchdowns two picks 280 yards let's take a look at this oregon defense actually see if there's any see who got these picks strong safety taishin johnson seven tackles a pick and then jabbar muhammad two picks with a touchdown take a look at the penn state stats obviously drew aller did not play that well had two turnovers did have 280 yards and two touchdowns. Nick Singleton had 75 yards and a touchdown. Harrison Wallace did all he could, 145 yards. Liam Clifford had 80 yards and a touchdown. June Fleming had a touchdown, but the undefeated Penn State Nitty Lions finally make the playoffs, but it's not enough. They lose in the quarterfinals. Ole Miss, Utah. This was another great game. Utah stormed back in the third quarter, but Ole Miss was able to pull it out in the fourth. Jackson Dart, 270 with two touchdowns and an interception. Really didn't run the ball very well, but... Henry Parrish did have two touchdowns on the ground. Jordan Watkins, 130 through the air with a touchdown. And Trey Harris, 130 with a touchdown as well. My goodness. Cam Rising was slinging the rock. 260 with five touchdowns. Did have two picks. That was probably the sealer right there. Mikey Bernard had 75 yards on the ground. Ran the ball really well. Dorian Singer had 122 with a touchdown. Money Parks had two touchdowns. And Damian Alford had a touchdown. Let's take a look at this Ole Miss defense. Trey Washington, the safety, four tackles, but also had the pick. And then Raymond Collins, the middle linebacker, had a couple tackles and a 14-yard interception. Ole Miss's defense is what ends up making the difference here. And finally, our final quarterfinal game, NC State comes back down 10 in the fourth to win the game against Notre Dame in overtime. Grayson McCall, three touchdowns, two, 206 yards, but did have a pick. Jordan Waters, 103 yards on the ground with a touchdown. Dakari Collins on just three carries, 80 yards and a touchdown. Kevin Concepcion, two touchdowns through the air, and Noah Rogers. Notre Dame, Riley Leonard played great, 250 with three touchdowns. Jeremiah Love had 95 yards on the ground. Jaden Thomas had two touchdowns and Jaden Greathouse had a touchdown. It just was not enough as NC State advances to the semifinals. One more time, let's take a look at the bracket. Oregon, Ohio State, a Big Ten battle in the Orange Bowl for a spot in the national championship. And then NC State, Ole Miss, an SEC ACC clash in the Cotton Bowl. Winner advances to the national championship. Let's get right to it. Let's take a look at the bracket. Oregon takes down Ohio State, so I did not get that right either. But NC State takes down Ole Miss, so our national championship this year in real life is going to be between the Oregon Ducks and the North Carolina State Wolfpack. If you told me that this was the final we'd get, I would have laughed at you. Oregon, I get. They're a preseason top five team. They have loads of experience, loads of talent at every position. But NC State, I don't even think they were projected to get top five in the ACC at the beginning of the season. But you know what? I'm going to ride with the Wolfpack. I think the NC State Wolfpack are going to take down Oregon. I think they're going to win. NC State takes down Ole Miss. Let's take a look at this one. Held Ole Miss scoreless in the first half. Just got a touchdown in the fourth quarter to win this game. Grayson McCall, 257 with three touchdowns. Jordan Waters had 52 yards on the ground with a touchdown as well. Receiving wise, Dakari Collins has been everywhere. 150 with a touchdown. Concepcion had a touchdown as well. For Ole Miss, Jackson Dart played okay, 205 with three touchdowns and an interception. Ulysses Bentley had 75 yards on the ground. Jordan Watkins, 130 with two touchdowns, and Antoine Wells had a touchdown, but it was not enough as NC State advances to the national championship game. 
And in the Big Ten battle, Oregon takes down Ohio State with a furious second half comeback. They were down 24 to 14 going into the third second half and outscored Ohio State 28 to 14 in the second half. That's great. Will Howard is back in his first game back. Played okay, 344 touchdowns with two interceptions. You wonder if Devin Brown would have played better. Quinshawn Judkins had 54 yards and a touchdown as well. Looks like no trade on Henderson, so he is hurt. Jeremiah Smith had a buck 20 through the air with two touchdowns, and Carnell Tate had two touchdowns. So great game offensively, but let's take a look at Oregon. Dylan Gabriel, 302 with six touchdowns. Oh my God. God, they didn't even need to run the ball. Trace on holding 114 with a touchdown. Patrick Herbert, 54 and a touchdown. Jurion Dickey had a touchdown. Tez Johnson had a touchdown. Jordan James had a touchdown. Kenyon Sadiq had a touchdown. Three of the six touchdowns through the air were the only completed pass to those receivers. That's crazy. Let's see who got the defensive pick. Oh, Tysheen Johnson. The guy that had to pick, the safety had to pick last week, four tackles, two interceptions. A great game from Tysheen Johnson. And now we get NC State. Versus Oregon in the national championship game. Let's get to it. Let's take a look at the college football playoff bracket and see if the NC State Wolfpack pulled it off. And they did! The Wolfpack take down Oregon in all your 2024 champions. This is not something I expected. Oh my goodness. The ACC, a conference kind of in dire straits right now, gets a championship. Oh my God. NC State down 28 to 17 going into the fourth quarter. Rip off 15 unanswered to stun the Oregon Ducks and win a national championship. Grayson McCall in his senior season goes 270 with three touchdowns to lead NC State. Jordan Waters in his senior season, 116 yards on the ground with a touchdown, 100 yards through the air with a touchdown. Noah Rogers has 90 yards and two touchdowns. Let's take a look at Oregon. Dylan Gabriel played great, 380 with three touchdowns, just no run game. Trayshawn holding 142 yards with two touchdowns. Tez Johnson, 70 yards with a touchdown. It just wasn't enough. As the North Carolina State Wolfpack are your 2024 champions, this is not something that I expected. Oh my God. So we're going to leave it here. Just wanted to do something like this. You'll probably see more short form content around the weeks to come in terms of like doing week one, week two, week three, yada, yada, yada. But yeah, this was incredible. This is, I cannot believe the way this season turned out. Shout out to the Kennesaw State Owls, five and seven. Didn't get a bowl game. Georgia Tech, we're coming for you. I don't know. I just want to try something different. This was super easy. It's super fun. I enjoyed looking at the Sim. The Sim is crazy. I cannot tell you that I expected to see Nevada at 11 and two, Miami at 11 and two in the playoffs with a Heisman winner or a Heisman finalist. NC State winning a national championship. If you guys like it, comment down below. Let me know what you want to see me do next. Make sure to like and subscribe. And uh, yeah, YouTube thinks you're going to like this video. Find out if they're right.